These things do happen one horrible thing at a time. There's this great book called Ordinary Men, mm -hmm. um, which, which describes the descent of, of a German police force from ordinary bourgeois middle class men, essentially just ordinary policemen, who actually were raised before the Hitler youth. They weren't indoctrinated, you know, as young people. Um, and they were, they were brought into Poland to sort of mop up after the Germans had walked through. And it describes how they descended into the sort of people who would take naked women out, naked pregnant women out into the middle of fields and shoot them in the back of the head. And what's horrifying about the book is that the author, um, Browning, um, details the stages by which this occurred. And it's, it's, well, for example, the commander of this unit told the men that they were going to have to do terrible things, but that they could go home if they wanted to. And then you think, well, there's, a, there's an out. But, but then if you really think about it, you think, well, they're a tight, tightly knit quasi-military organization. And one of the natural thoughts under that circumstance would be, well, I'm not going to leave my comrades to do all the dirty work. That would just be a matter of cowardice. And so you can see that you know, that, that there's an ethical requirement that would keep you there to begin with. And then they were... Well, you're, you're, you're doing what you just said, which is taking the burden of this sinful activity on yourself. If you let everyone else do it, then you're not, you're not acting heroically. Well, right. And, and, and so it was easy for the men to get entrapped into that. And then, you know, the requirements for their horrific action kept ramping up. And like each time they accepted the requirement of doing one horrific thing, the probability that they would accept the next requirement increased. And what is also really interesting about that book, uh, Ordinary Men, is that it's not like these men didn't suffer. Like, they were suffering terribly. They were physically ill. They were vomiting. They were, they were tearing themselves apart psychologically, you know, but they didn't quit. So that's a, that's a great book because if you want to know how you walk down the, how you, how you can be enticed to walk down a terrible path, that's the book to read. And it's very frightening because if you read it properly, then, you know, you have to read it again, as I said, as if you're one of the people to whom this is happening, not the victim, but the oppressor, you know. And I mean, you can also read it as the victim. That's fair enough. But, but it's ordinary people who participate in these things. And that's a very, very terrifying thought. We actually covered that book on this podcast. And both of them. Yeah. The yeah. One, both Viktor Frankl and... and uh, ordinary men uh -huh. and yeah um it's interesting because i as i as i you know i've watched all your stuff read and one of the things that i was thinking about is you know you talk about where the 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 hero comes from where this idea comes from and how we ended up looking at these types of people as they're good and it happens over ages and ages and generations and generations of saying oh that's a good quality and that's a good quality and there's these 10 people that are all considered good people and they all have this couple qualities in common so those are good qualities and eventually that becomes um, elevated to the point where we say that's a hero and what I was thinking of so that so that's what happens and now we all have this elevated thing to look at and say that's something we can aspire to that's where we want to go that's where we want to be we want to we want to help and we want to support we want to make sacrifices for the tribe how do we end up or who ends up saying i see something evil and i'm going to follow in that direction well 